Hello and welcome to the program. I am Mary Kanu. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila, has threatened to issue a warrant of arrest against the Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Godwin Imefile if he fails to appear next Tuesday. Bajabia Mila's threat was in response to another letter from the Central Bank intimating the House of yet another inability to honor its invitation over the bank's January 31st deadline sent, set by the CBN for the exchange of the old notes with the newly designed ones as well as the scarcity of the new notes. In a statement read on the floor of the House, the Speaker said he would not hesitate to invoke relevant sections of the Constitution to force the appearance of the CBN Governor and Order Bank Chiefs. In previous invitations, Emefile, who was out of the country on official leave, was represented by CBN Deputy Governor Financial Systems and Stability, Aisha Ahmed, who led a team of high-ranking officials of the Apex Bank. Now, in what seems like a twist, Bajabia Mila, who however said in Mayfile is his friend, says he would not hesitate to demand the Inspector General of Police to effect the CBN governor's arrest and forceful appearance before the House. Now, does the House reserve the power to summon the CBN governor? Adewale Ajadi, political affairs analyst and legal expert, joins me on the program from England. Thank you very much for joining me. Now let's begin. How serious, how serious do you think the threats by the lawmakers are to arrest Emefile, who occupies a position of authority as the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria? I don't know how serious their threats are, but I know they have the power to arrest him if they want to under Section 89 of the 1999 Constitution. They can order for him to be arrested and brought before the house. They have wide ranging powers to execute such a such a decision. Um, so that's that's not that should not be in dispute. I think it's section 89, 1 C and D of the 1999 Constitution. Um, all right. Does the House have the power to arrest Mayfile, saying that he was once duly represented by the CBN Deputy Governor? You know, he hasn't outrightly ignored the invitations. Like I said, he was once represented by the CBN Deputy Governor of the Financial Systems and Stability, Aisha Ahmed. Now, is an arrest extreme? I, I would think it would be extreme because it sends a very wrong signal about the independence of the CBN, and it challenges the policy on the face of it. I think um, such a drastic action would send serious signal and give the imp impression that the House is taking a stance against the policy. But having said that, I don't think that the CBN governor should refuse such an invitation, considering the fact that the decisions that is made are always subject to the oversight of the House of Assembly, and if you respect that oversight and uh, act with um, 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 respect for it, everybody in the country is subject to those rights that are given to the House from the Constitution as representatives of the people. So I think you should respect that and, and engage in dialogue with them. Well, during plenary, Bajabia Mila pointed out that the CBN Act allows the admittance of old Naira notes by banks, you know, even after it had ceased to be legal tenders. Now, why then would you say the Apex Bank fixed the January 31st deadline, knowing what the CBN Act stipulates? Well, I'm not an expert on the CBN Act, but I would say to you quite simply that what they're trying to do on the face of it if there are no other motives behind it, is an exemplary act to prevent the hoarding of cash illegally um, in different ways, illegal, um, illegally um, acquired money in Nigeria. It's a very important thing, especially during an election year. Uh, and I think that they're trying to do this. This is, this is also part of a, a trend towards digitalization. You know, if you go and look at it, India has tried the same um, um, way of digitalizing this currency and, and preventing corruption. Because when you reduce the amount of cash transactions, you reduce the ability of people to manipulate the system and take cash um, against official um, obligations. So it's, 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 it's a laudable effort 
Um, the timing is also to prevent cash sloshing around the, the elections and make sure that people's um, votes are not bought. These are all things that are laudable and things that, that we want. But I mean, the process itself should have an oversight. They should, they should, they should be uh, um, the House of Assembly oversight over the process as they have over any process in Nigeria. So I, I think that both sides have very strong points and we should just um, not allude any implicit objectives, but just the tensions of two institutions trying to get their objectives um, across. Now, the reps have called for an extension of the deadline for swapping old Naira notes, which is in favor of Nigerians. Now, do you somehow foresee a crisis brewing between the House of Reps and, and the CBN, which may escalate and in turn affect Nigerians? Well, I don't think it's against Nigerians to keep to this deadline. How is that possible? They, they would still have access to their funds. It's not that they won't have access to their funds. They have access to it other than in cash. And if they are cash transactions, they can legitimately back the sources of their income. It shouldn't be a problem at all. All they have to do is put their um, existing money in banks. They've had 90 days to do that. I don't think we should automatically say it's against Nigerians. However, having said that, there might be other things that are in play here that I don't know about or you don't know about. Mm -hmm. But on the face of it, there's really no, no real um, thing other than trying to work in the long-term interest of Nigerians who complain of corruption incessantly, who complain uh, that the, the, the elites have ordered money to try and find a way around it. There's no way you can make an omelette without cracking eggs. There's go going to be some kind of process that you're going to have to go through. Now, we can't want our cake and eat it at the same time. For those of us in Nigeria, um, the new Naira notes are scarce. Some of us are yet to have them in our possession. If the central bank has said it is implementing this policy in our favor, how then do we juxtapose the scarcity of the notes and the deadline by the bank? I think that you're confusing two things. One, the process of digitalization means that you're doing your transactions without using notes at all. You can transfer money, you can find ways to exchange value without using cash. That's the goal of something like this. That being said, I don't think that for legitimate purposes, there should be the incredible difficulty people are having. You have to realize that whatever the CBM plans to do, as it is in most other policies, there are processes of implementation. Why are banks not collecting the funds that are available to them? Why are they not making it easier for people to do? And banks are almost laws on themselves. But having said that, we can't just all always throw the baby away with the bathwater. There's a process here. Let's look at the process. Let the um, um, House of Assembly look at it and say, this is where the problems are. Can it be fixed? Don't automatically say it's the deadline that is the problem. Let's find solutions that doesn't undermine the policy that has been set in place. If you extend the deadline willy-nilly, the same money that you are complaining about that has been given to kidnappers, that have been given to drug dealers, that have been given to Boko Haram, are being utilized for making life the insecurity that we complain about. So this, these are all things that we have to balance and, and see how it works. We can't talk about inconvenience and talk about insecurity. Well, the central bank is trying to mop up illegal funds. Let's see, let's support them, let's make sure it works, and let's make sure it works without it being reckless. That's the most important point. Well, all right now, Adewale Ajadi, political affairs analyst and legal expert, thank you for your time and your contribution. Thank you for inviting me. We'll take a break now, and when we return the program, we'll continue to stay with us.